on this latest episode of BWZ, we're going to be, of course, doing some interesting reviews. Now, I'm going to do the final GCW Collective show, which is Effie Big Gay Brunch. We're going to have some very interesting matches we definitely going to be talking about. But the main event we want to focus on is, of course, Thrusty, consistent of Effie. Alley Catch and Dark Sheet taking on Mason's Mercenaries, consistent of Charles Mason, Paro, and Billy Dixon. And of course, we move on with, of course, Choco Pro 309, where we have two interesting matches. The first one is for the Sep Up Openweight Championship between the former champion, Shavam, taking on Masahiro Takanashi, who is the current champion. And then, of course, there's the Emmy Sakura Farewell Royal Rumble. That's going to be very fun to watch. And if then, of course, we move on to our final review, which is New Japan Pro Wrestling with more R Road to Wrestling Dodaku, which is preview matches before we get to Wrestling Dodaku. And then, of course, we cap things up with some news updates to tell what show is being promoted, who's going to be booked and what, what matches are set up, and whatever we can get our hands on. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, let's begin with GCW's Effie's Big Gay Brunch. This is the final show of the GCW Collective that happened on April 1st at the UCC. It of course had opening where we have Poyle Damar and a few and another host. I forgot his name, but of course we had the guy who set up and organized this show. We're talking about Effie doing his little promo. But however, while he was doing his little promo, AC Max shows up and interrupts basically what he was trying to push, pushed everything to move forward. So he had to be in a match against Honest John versus Richie Coy. Versus Jai Vidal. Now, this is more of a uh, scramble match, but with four people in it, in case anybody asked. So, I wasn't too sure how this was going to turn out, but seems to be it was AC Mack who picked up the win. When he applied an avalanche the, um, pedigree or so, I'm not sure if that's the case, onto um, Richie Coy, and boom, ended right there. And, of course, he gave out a little post-match promo. Saying some things, you know, I'm not going to go into details because we probably know what kind of people would say. Now, our next match, uh, I think we have, is a singles match. We have Devin Monroe versus um, Kata Murray. Of course, um, people were rooting for De Devin Monroe to pick up the win, but Kata Murray got away with it by using three low blows right onto Devin, uh, Devin Monroe. And then, of course, applying a DDT to finish it off. Got away with it by using rules that doesn't apply indeed in GCW. That sort of thing. Next up, we got Steph DeLanders. As you know, she's been a pain in the butt for many fans. And she aligned herself with Matt Cardona. She takes on Sandra Moon. Now, you pro I'm, you know, in the back of my mind watching this match, I thought like, I don't know if anybody thought this thing. I thought Matt Cardona was going to show up and make sure that Steph DeLander was going to win. But no, Steph won by applying a pinfall on Sandra Moon and given the win, and I guess people have to deal with her sorry ass since she aligned herself with the one person that GCW fan base do not want. Next up, we got Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser taking on uh, Karam. I thought this match was pretty good because, you know, Fred Rosser, he's so impressive. But I figured this was going to end it with him because um, he's always been impressive since being in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, for the strong shows mostly, but uh, he applied the chinking wing, which was very effective, and forced Karam to tap out. So, 
Good win for Mr. No Days Off. Next up, we have Sawyer Wreck taking on Kid Bandit. Now, Kid Bandit, we know he's a little short. She, We know she's short, but she has to avoid the strength of Sawyer Wreck. Well, it worked in Benny's occasions, but at some point, Sawyer Wreck applied a double-handed uh, choke through the door on Kid Bandit to pick up the win. So, that's how it ends. Now, our next match is a uh, sort of a, um, I don't know, 10-person tag match or something like that. Uh, we have East and West, so representing the East, we have Aaron Roke, Ashton Starr, Becca, Dylan McQueen, and Rico Gonzalez taking on Abigail Warren, The Shade, Anton um, Voorhees, and the tag team known as NPR consisting of Fabulous Fabrico and Marco Margur. Now, this match, I wasn't too sure how this was going to be. But, of course, it was going back and forth, back and forth, until Anton pinned Rico Gonzalez to pick up the win. Now, our next match, uh, we have Vipress taking on Max the Impaler. So, this is where, of course, the David versus Goliath in a female version kicks in. So some of you may think Vipress is the David in the story. Nope, uh, did not go exactly like that. Basically, Goliath walked away with the win. But in the process of picking up the win, Maxine Impaler carries Vipress all the way to the back. Don't know what she's going to do to her, but <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Now, our main event features Thrussy, consistent of Effie, Alley Catch, and Thurkshi taking on Mason's mercenaries consistent of Charles Mason, Perro, and Billy Dixon. Now, we know that Mason has been a pain in the ass to Alicatch and Effie for a long time. You know, criticizing them, saying that, you know, they're a bunch of fools and all this. Not to mention many times we have seen Billy Dixon, who doesn't seem to be in the same page as uh, Charles Mason. But there were moments times that he's conflicted because Charles Mason knows what he's doing. But... I knew that the boiling point with Billy Dixon was going to come about where he had enough of Charles Mason and they were going to deal with him. But luckily in this particular match, it was a leg drop by Dark Sheet to pick up the win on top of a big ladder. So hopefully this is the end of their confrontation with Charles Mason because Charles Mason, he always tries to prove a point that he thinks that he's politically correct, but we'll see what happens then. So I think that's pretty much it with, of course, the GCW Effie's Big Gay Brunch. So let's move on to our next review, Choco Pro. Okay, Choco Pro. 309. I think this is one of the most exciting shows I've watched so far. Now, our opening match, we have the setup open weight championship between the former champion Shivam and the current champion Masahiro Takanashi. Now, those who aren't familiarized with this whole thing, um, Masahiro Takanashi made the trip to Thailand to participate in a match for this particular title against Shivam, where unfortunately he picked up the win and brought the title back from Thailand to Japan, and now Shivam is on the verge to bring that title back to Thailand. So will he do it? Well, we'll find out. I thought this match was pretty intensified. I mean, we know Masahiro Takanashi will not let this one slide. He will not let this particular title be slipped out of his fingers and sent back to Thailand. We know If you guys have known this a lot, uh, Masahiro Takanashi does have some connections back in Thailand, so he knows exactly how that feels. But... I have to say, Shivam did a pretty good job. You probably would have thought that he would have won this one and taken the belt back to Thailand, but unfortunately, Masakiro Takanashi applied some sort of a crossface submission technique onto Shivam, and Shivam had no other choice but to tap out. And the title remains still in Japan. So basically, we need to we'll find out who in the setup roster will be. Trying to strip that uh, dethrone Masahiro for that belt. For me, I'm going to say this. I hope is 
Kappa uh, Kozo or someone from the Kappa World Order, which there have been they've been set it up set up down in the promotion in Thailand. Now our next match is the Emi Sakura Farewell Royal Rump Bat uh, Royal Rumble. It features a lot of wrestlers. We have not only just Emi Sakura, we have of course uh, Sayaka Obihiro who just came back from the, her little uh, injury or whatever she was doing. May Shuruga, Chiko Shikawa, Tokiko Kihara, Balinaki, yeah! Andrew Tang, and someone I did not expect, Kevin Koo from uh, Deadlock Pro Wrestling. Yes, I did not expect him to be there, truth to be told. I mean, Andrew Tang, yeah, because he's, of course, Shivam's boy. But <laughs> Kevin Koo, no. But this, these, this guy actually was... Uh, participating, of course, in the um, crossover between Got to Move and the, and uh, DPW. I wasn't. I thought he might have went back home, but nope. Looks like he was sticking around for a little while. But it was great to see him there. But unfortunately, now those who aren't familiar, how does this battle royal works? It's the same kind of rules. Either you pin or submit, or the unorthodox message: toss your opponent through the window. Yeah. That that kind of works, but I, I thing is I would have assumed I think many fans might have assumed that Emmy Sakura would have been the one to win, but no, apparently um, Emmy Sakura got pinned by both her proteges by both Tokiko and Mei Shuga, but it can only be one. In the end, it became Tokiko with the Iron Claw to Mei Shuga, tossed her out through the window and pick up the win, so she won. The Royal Rumble on this one. Now, the Jonkin tournament. This one was a little difficult me for to predict, but I was like nuts. I was like a bit of surprise that the, the both Breast Bros were out. But um, in the finals, we got Shivam and of course Masa. Shivam won the Jonkin tournament. He gets a piece of chocolate. So basically, he may not have won the title, but at least he gets the piece of chocolate. That's what matters to him. So I think that's pretty much it right now with uh, Cho uh, Choco Pro. So let's do our final review, which is New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okay. New Japan Pro Wrestling. We got more in uh, Road 2, R Wrestling Dodaku, in this time, uh, the last few times I never mentioned the location, but this location is in Bepup. Um, really, really popular down there, but uh, let's get to it. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi comes out to do a little promo, but unfortunately I don't know what he said. Uh, there was no English commentating, which was a shame. I mean, it would have been nice, but no. Uh, but he did join the Japanese commentary team as to enjoy the show. Now our opening match we have the Young Lions more consistent with uh, Boatleg Uleg and Oscar Lobe. Now normally when we see the Young Lions um, most of the time we see them either one of them loses the match or of course we end with the obvious the time limit draw. Uh, however this one ended when of course um, Oleg had Lube, Lobe on the um, on what was it on the Boston Crab, but unfortunately time ran out, so they exceeded their their ten minutes, so it ended in a draw. So very disappointing, but we can see a lot of growth in these two gentlemen, so we'll see how far they go next time. Now our next match we have the House of Torture once again: Togo, Sho, Yudro, and Evil taking on the members of Chaos, consistent of Yano, Yo. Yoshihashi and Hiroki Goto. Now, as you know, recently we have been seeing Yoshihashi and Goto are asking for another opportunity of the tag team titles, but Evil and Yujiro are like in their in their faces telling them, hey, you guys had your chances. It's our time. So stay out of our way. But you know the fact that the chaos of the both Goto and Yoshihashi are not just gonna sit there and let these these guys, the most hated unit in, of course. In New Japan, try to do something. We know they'll cut corners, but luckily, 
Yano took out uh, took out uh, Dick Togo. If Kevin Kelly was here, he would say, oh, my monitor went out. You know what that means? He gave the low blow to Dick Togo, and he picked up the win by applying the schoolboy, and pff, it's over. Of course, Kevin Kelly said, w what just happened? Wait a minute, you're saying that he low blowed uh, Togo? I didn't see it. My monitor just went out. <laughs> he would have said that. Now, our next match, we have the United Empire, consistent of Aaron Hanare, along with uh, Catch 2 2, Francisco Kara, and TJP taking on Rohe Oiwa and the J current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, um, Kevin Knight and Kushida. Now, you know that Catch 2 2 are probably bitter knowing that they lost. Sooner or later, they probably would definitely want another ch shot of those titles, but we don't know when. But I figured that this match would end with United Empire because Aaron Hanare put Oiwa in the full Nelson lock. And that's pretty much it, giving the United Empire the win. Now, as for the other members of the United Empire, we have the Great Okan, Ozzy Open, Fletcher and Davis, and Jeff Cobb taking all the entirety members of TMDK, plus the Fujita, Shane Haste, Mikey Nichols, and the frontman, Zack Sabre Jr. But as always, we've seen many times how these matches are. Now, keep in mind, in this particular match, we have a preview between both uh, Jeff Cobb and Black uh, Zack Sabre Jr. due to the fact that Jeff Cobb wants to challenge for the has issued the challenge for the IWGP World Television title, which he believes he'll walk away with the title. But we know Zack Sabre Jr. he is good at what he does in the ring. But in this case, it was uh, Fujita who ended up being submitted by uh, Khan, giving them the win. But as soon as the match ended, of course, uh, Bushimon comes out for probably get the opportunity, but however, we saw y Sho and uh, Dick Togo attack them while in the ring. Evil and Yujiro attack Ozzy Open and they steal the tag team titles, claiming that they are the new tag team champions. But you know perfectly well Ozzy Open is not just going to let this slide. They will get their payback on both of them one way or another, but we'll find out. Now, our next match, we have Bullet Club, consistent of Ghetto, Taiji Shimuri, Kenta, and David Finley taking on Master Wato, along with the members of G.O.D., Ghetto, Ikileo, and Ta Matanga. Uh, as you know, this great war between Ikileo and Tama rages on against uh, their former Bullet, uh, Bullet Club member, was, except for David Finley. So I thought this was a pretty interesting match, but as always, Wado picked up the win by applying a submission onto Ghetto, but it became a Bullet Club beatdown onto the winning team. They t t uh, sending a direct message to Tama and to Hikuleo. As you know, Hikuleo will be challenging uh, Kenta for the Strong Openweight Championship, while David Finley challenges for the Never Openweight Championship. Now, our, ne our next match is... In eight-man tag match, we have uh, GBH, consistent of Tama Aki Hamna, or as Kevin Kelly would say, hey, look, it's Hamna. Uh, with his tag partner, Togi Makabe, they team up with the members of Chaos, consistent of Tomo Iro Ishii and Kaguchika Okada, while they take on the members of Yuto Nakashima and Strong Style, consistent of Despi, Suzuki, and Narita. Now, keep in mind, Strong Style has issued the challenge, a reverse nomination, to Okada to pick two partners of his choosing. So we all know one particular partner is, uh, of course, Tomo Iroishi. But nonetheless, it was, of course, um, the Boston Crab by, um, who was Ishii, onto Nakashima to force him to tap. But however, finally, it's been consistent. To, uh, Okada asked Tanahashi if he wants to be part of this thing. So, however, the last time we saw Ishii was not too keen on the idea of having Tanahashi involved. But um, he knows that Okada has to put, he wants them to put their differences aside. Now, Tanahashi is good doing that. Ishii not so much, but he's willing to give it a shot. So basically, it's now decided Tanahashi is the third member. Now, our next two matches are a series of matches involving both LIJ and Just Five Guys. Now, our first match, we have Bushi and Shingo representing LIJ. They take on the members of Doiki and Taichi. I thought this match was pretty good. Um, 
in this case, uh, as you know, Taichi had an incredible match against Shingo for the KOPW title. But unfortunately, Taichi won that match and became the new champion. But he once again applied the same submission move onto Do onto uh, Shingo onto Bushi, forcing Bushi to tap out, giving them the win. And then, of course, our main event is the other members from both units, um, Naito and Hiromu taking on um, Kanemaru and Sonata. Now, if you guys remember, Sonata did ish issue the challenge for the junior heavyweight title, but lost. Now, Hiromu is coming for the, the world heavyweight title. So, basically, this is like a preview to that. But in this case, it was Naito with the Destino to Kanemaru that picked up the win. So, LIJ won this match, and they won the main event. But, however, Hiromu said that coming on May 3rd, he will fulfill his dream to be the IW double champion, which in, in, implies become the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. But Sonata thinks that he is being too delusional about what he wants. So, I did mention that he's saying that he is being, how do I say, um, dishonorable with the junior heavyweight division. But we'll see what happens when it comes to May 3rd. I think that's pretty much it with, of course, uh, the reviews. Let's move on to news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news updates. First things first. We want to give two congratulations. The first one is to Camille and her husband, Corey Graves. They have announced that they are going to have, are expecting their first child. So congratulations, Camille and Corey, on your first baby. But the second congratulation goes to Ginny and Gunther, has now been foretold. They just got married. So that's pretty awesome for Gunther. Uh, there's some clips you can see them ha having a time of their lives during their, during their wedding reception. So, congratulations. Now, on interesting developments. Now, as you all may or may not know, Tessa Blanchard uh, screwed things up with herself a couple years ago with Impact. And, of course, we've been hearing that um, AEW and WWE had no interest in signing her. However, a very uh, unusual uh, thing took place. It was later foretold by XPW, or Extreme Pro Wrestling, that she signed a multi-show deal with them. Now, this is possibly, my opinion, the worst thing that could have gone for her at all. I mean, those who... I hear people saying that XPW is not one of the best promotions. I mean, look, I know it's not, but I do watch some other f events. But I don't know if this the thing is... We know Tessa Blanchard has screwed herself over this. I don't know if she'll be able to recover from it. But um, she is set to debut on this promotion later on this month on the 27th at New York, New Jersey for the Heart at the Heart Ball Room. So we'll see how that plays out. Okay. Now for our AW updates here, uh, two things have been announced. Uh, if you guys remember, we've been seeing the QTV recently making their development. Uh, it's now been confirmed that Harley uh, Cameron uh, has signed with AEW. Uh, this is something that I did not expect, but we have seen her a few times on Dark. Uh, but now she's part of this group now with QTV, and we'll see how that goes. And the second update with AEW, we have Leva Bates. Uh, it's announced that she is no longer with the company. The contract, her contract with AEW has expired, but she did left a little something that she, um her gratitude, I believe. Let me pull it up. I know I can. I have. I saved it up somewhere. Here it is. As of t as of today, my contract with AW has expired. The last four years have been quite a ride. I've learned so much and grown exponentially. I've seen wrestling history take place as someone who was on the team since before the first show. I appreciate and love all the crew, staff, talent. I will cherish all memories together i've given my time my focus and effort to the company but now i have got um focus on myself my future and my career i hope you all my friends fans and loved ones stay with me through the next chapter of my journey i hope to make all you proud no matter where i go 
So basically, uh, she the departure was amicably, amicably, I believe. So basically, she'll be fine. So we will stay tuned where her journey takes her. Now, speaking, she's not the only one that's been announced of uh, departing from AW. Uh, Alicia Fox, who, sir, who spent 17 years with WWE, has announced she is no longer with the company. Her contract also expired. So, uh, don't know what she'll be doing now that she's out of WWE, but we'll find out. The Five Wrestling announced for their upcoming events for later on this month of Vertigo. Uh, Joey Janela will be in action to take on Guillermo Rosas. And then, of course, the Defy tag team titles will be defended between the Second Gear crew and Saint and Sinner. So that's going to be one hell of a match. Uh, now for our final updates here coming from GCW. The first one we have, The Way I Am, that takes place on the 20th of this month. Um, Effie will be taking on Blake Christian. I think this is going to be an interesting one because... As you know, Blake Christian being the total a-hole that he's been. Uh, let's see how he handled Effie. I'm sure he'll quit the match before it's all, it gets started. For the Tournament of Survival 8 on the 3rd of June, Sawyer Rec has been announced the next participant in this tournament. As for our Cage of Survival, we have Hijo de Vikingo will be making his appearance on June 4th. And then finally, for Thank... Uh, Thank me later on the 17th of June. Kevin Knight will be making his return to GCW. So uh, I think that's pretty much it right now for our updates here. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Coming up, as you know, we have NXT. But also, um, we have... Um, Gambari Yoshi coming out on YouTube. So I'll be reviewing that. This is the first time I see the Gambari uh, brand in the Yoshi setting taking place. I did not see the one they had restart, but this one I have to say is going to be interesting. So I'll be doing that. Uh, hopefully we do get NWA Power and AW Dark. If not, then um, we'll see. Uh, well, as you know, because we don't have, uh, there was no AW Dark Elevation. They canceled the show, so that was kind of a bummer. But we'll see how that help happens. So at the moment, I'll just end it right here. And I'll see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.